Roche Clinical Pharmacology explains disease modeling. A new drug candidate has just completed phase one development. PKPD modeling provided an initial assessment of the relationship between dose regimen, drug exposure, and drug effect. And it confirmed that the drug engaged with its target. Now Joe, the project leader, and his team are designing a Phase 2 Proof of Concept, or POC, trial. There is now a new set of questions to answer. What kind of patients should be studied in the POC? How long will it take to see clinically meaningful changes in the relevant disease biomarkers or clinical endpoint? And how likely are these changes to predict success in Phase 3? Annie, the clinical pharmacology representative, tells Joe that a disease model can help to answer these questions and to design a proof-of-concept study. Joe is familiar with PKPD models, but disease modeling is something new. What's the difference and how can this new technique be used in drug development? Annie explains that disease models are computer representations of diseases based on experimental clinical data and human pathophysiological concepts. They provide a quantitative link between various factors. Changes in symptoms and disease biomarkers over time, the underlying progression of the disease, and the variability between patients. A disease model enables us to correlate short-term effects on disease biomarkers with long-term effects on clinical endpoints, such as how an initial decrease in virus count leads to a sustained viral response, or how early tumor shrinkage translates into progression-free survival in a cancer study, just to mention two examples. By modeling the variability in disease progression, we can also identify patients whose disease will progress more quickly or slowly and thereby enrich a study with the most appropriate population. In the case of the Alzheimer disease model, the disease stage, hippocampal volume and amyloid level differed between fast and slow progressors. Joe now has a better sense of how disease modeling addresses the design challenges of a proof of concept. But what else does it do? Annie explains that disease models often incorporate multiple targets and pathways, allowing them to tackle questions such as, what level of target engagement will result in meaningful changes in biomarkers and clinical endpoints over time? Or, what is the best way to combine two drug candidates in a new trial or on top of the standard of care? Joe wonders how disease modeling relates to clinical trial simulations, or CTS for short. Annie explains that PKPD and disease models are the building blocks of CTS. Together, they integrate the drug regimen, target engagement, disease biology, and patient variability. Thanks to Annie, Joe now understands the scope and value of disease modeling and how it enhances drug development at Roche.